And finally this evening, Carrie Saldo is back with our arts report. This month you're looking ahead to the Women Plus Film Festival in Denver. That's right, it's Women's History Month, so an appropriate month to look at this. And Voices Festival, it's in its fifth year here in Denver. And Tammy Breslin, the founder of that festival, wanted to found it because she looked around the landscape of film and recognized that it's very male-centric, right? Male directors, movies are often focused on men or have men as protagonists. And so she wanted to put on a film festival that flipped that on its head and focused on women. We can see a little bit more. I pitched the idea of the festival five years ago to the Denver Film Society. When I was watching films to program for the festival, there was a documentary about a woman who brought 12 of her family members over from the Congo during the genocide. And she wanted to go back and start reconciling with her country. So there was a line in the documentary where she said, if we don't speak up, nobody will know we are here. And the light bulb went off in my head and said, oh my gosh, that's the name of the festival is Voices. Because part of the mission of the festival is to bring stories of women from around the world to the public and to our viewers. It's so important to have a woman's voice in the storytelling and the world. I mean, over half of the population is women. We want to hear our stories told. And we see the lack of women in the stories because most of the stories are written by men. So I think we're seeing a lack of women's touch in film. You can see the full video of the Women Plus Film Festival at the Arts District website, and this is how many days? March 17th through the 20th, and people can expect, you know, documentaries, narratives, some shorter works, and also a, a variety of public events, discussions, things like that. That's what's great about a film festival. You even are going to conduct one of the salons. I am, and it is titled The Revolution Won't Be Televised, uh -huh. and it looks at how YouTube and Vimeo have become actual platforms for these films. Makers. It's no longer sort of this small, obscure thing. It's actually helping to launch a lot of these women's careers. That is so interesting and uh, worth taking in, obviously. Let's give a quick mention here on another women's project, the Athena Project Arts Festival. That's right. March 20th, that starts and runs into April. And it's held, events are held in Denver and Aurora. And we're talking about 40 performances, 200 plus artists, uh, artwork in galleries, things on stages, emerging playwrights. It's a broad, broad festival, all dedicated to women. Last but not least, you have decided to become an art collector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an aspiring art collector, as are many people. Um, but I recently went to the Denver Art Museum's Culture House um, brunch, which really talked about tips for art collecting. Art collecting 101. Art collecting 101, exactly. And a lot of people think, as did I before I went to this, that you need to have several thousand dollars in order to start investing in art. But that's not the case at all. And um, some things you need to think about are, what do you like? You know, what is visual? visually appealing to you? Do you like paintings? Is it abstract, figurative work? You know, once you determine what is suitable to your eye, go into galleries and don't be shy. Ask questions. If you see a painting that you like that's $6,000 on the wall, say, you know what, this particular piece is outside of my budget. Do you have something by this same artist that's in a lower price point? Do you have a print of this artist's work? Do you have maybe a study? Galleries are really willing to speak with you. And not look down your nose because you can't afford the $6,000 No, one? absolutely not. They're very happy to, to accommodate you in any way. When you're thinking about where you're going to hang it, should you be concerned about the other colors in the room? Absolutely not. Do not. One of the one of the art collector's tips was do not let the art match the couch or be concerned with the art matching the couch. If we were going to design for here, we wouldn't be necessarily looking for brown paintings. So instead, we'd be looking for something that caught our or my eye and, Absolutely. and just something I like to look at. Right, you, it's something that you are going to live with. I mean, something that I think is really interesting. Van Gogh, who is incredibly popular, right? Paintings now are worth millions and millions of dollars. But when he was a contemporary artist, he sold one painting in his lifetime. I didn't know that. Of the 900 or so paintings that he created, one. So think about that, right? What is interesting to your eye? What do you like? And then if you're using that to decorate your home or your office or wherever, you're going to enjoy it. Don't be concerned about, you know, what's popular, what's of the moment. Okay, but what if you're trying to invest in it and hoping to turn it around for more money later? Should you look well, at the, that? You know, the, the market is constantly going back and forth. So first and foremost, you want to be picking something that you love. And if you are investing more in it, you know, then you can think about, 
okay, is this going to be a return on my investment later? But first, do you like it? That's the most important thing. I look forward to uh, the future of Carrie Saldo, major art collector, and glad to hear that you've started. <laughs>